So what we're doing here is we're using 120 grit sandpaper to try to flatten the bottom of this. You want to do this on a, a surface that you know is really flat. This surface should work fine. I'm going to hold down evenly. I'm not going to hold the handles. I'm going to just hold down. I don't want to push too hard. Just from what I hear, you can, you can warp and bend these. So from what I can tell, just initially, there's a little bit of a, oh, not a little bit. There's a pretty good dip down in the front that we're going to have to work out. And I, we got to work this down quite a bit more to see what we have. And you can keep reusing your sandpaper when it gets clogged up like that. I usually like to take a wire brush and just tap it and brush it off a little bit. And it unclogs the sandpaper. Yeah, so there's a good little dip in the front. And again, I don't even know what we have back here. I'm gonna put a new piece of sandpaper down. If you wanna make sure the surface you have is as flat and clear of any debris as possible. It looks pretty flat. That little cup that was in here came out. And this pitting is not gonna go away 100%. It's not gonna look a lot better than that. So what I need to do is look at the surface to make sure I'm taking it off and it's coming out flat. So I think even with that pitting, it's still gonna be a usable tool. So I'm going to work on this quite a bit more and I'm not going to record that because I'm just going to be going back and forth for a while and we'll come back. I've gone over the 120 grit sandpaper, I went over 220, 320, I marked across with a sharpie and just kept sanding and sanding and sanding until all the lines were gone. So this way I know I got this about as flat as I can get it, I probably spent close to an hour, 45 minutes or so, sanding this as flat as I can possibly sand it. It feels very smooth and I believe it is about as flat as I'm going to be able to get it. So now that we've got it as flat as I'm going to possibly get it, right. we need to, before assembling it, actually I'll put this screw on here, when you're putting this on. Zoom in so you can see here. When you're putting this screw on here, this um, adjustment knob, it's again reverse threaded. These two little arms need to sit down inside of this groove in here. Pretty smooth. So now, for the next challenge, I gotta work with the edge of this. <laughs> so like I did with the other one, I'm gonna try to bring this one down to a 25 degree bevel. So this paper's 120 and 220 that I'm gonna use. So at least get the uh, chips out of it. That looks pretty rough. Yeah, you can see the edge. It's that's not pretty. So to set up this cone guide, the way it's going to work is this is going to sit like this. The blade's going to sit in it like this, and you want the bevel down. So I'm going to put it in here and just slightly finger tight. Get it to where I think it's going to be roughly. 25 degrees, 
then check it. And then adjust as needed. So you're gonna check your angle off of this wheel and off the edge of the, the tip of the iron. Because these are the two points that are gonna touch the sandpaper. I have about 27 degrees and I want 25 degrees. I need to slide it up. Try that. Nice thing about using a honing guide is you can be sure you're keeping your angle the entire time. And also, because it's squeezing flat against the sides of the iron, you can also be sure that the front edge and the bevel are all going to be square and flat along with the sides. So it's all going to be perpendicular as it should be. Right on 25. So we're going to stick with this angle and now that I've committed to sticking with this angle I'm going to tighten the honing guide just a bit. Not too tight because I don't want to put too much pressure here because you can see there's no metal in the center so you can squeeze or bend and alter the shape of it. So here I'm going to run it across the 120 grit for a while. This front bevel here is jagged and I want to sand this down so this whole edge is 25 degrees, this whole bevel. So I'm gonna do that now, this is gonna take a while. So I'm just gonna do that off camera. There's no need for you to have to watch me do this. It's probably gonna take me 20 minutes or so. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be back. All right, so I spent, I spent probably a good half an hour pushing hard and really grinding away. Definitely a lot better than it was. It's, um, and it's right up to the edge. There's no more chips in it. So it's a lot cleaner. It's got the proper bevel on it. It's flat, straight. I just went back to the back of the iron on the 120 grit and made this as flat as I could. And that's pretty good. There's just one little hollow spot here but that's not gonna affect it, that's fine. And I did verify after all that, grinding off of the metal with the sandpaper that we still have right on the 25 degree angle, so we're doing good. The chip breaker goes on the back of the iron, right up to about within a, I don't know, 16th of an inch or so of the edge, not going onto the edge. Wide screw, put that in here, tighten it, give it an extra turn with the screwdriver. So now, put the chip breaker side up, iron side down. So this screws in like this. I want to adjust this so it's just snug when you push this down. I think that might be good. So you want to be able to move this around. And you want to be able to move this, for the most part, with one finger. Okay, so now that we've got our plane restored as good as we can get it here, then we're gonna give it a shot. Wow, that's smooth. Wow, that works great. So we got these two restored Stanley planes working very good. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button below. If you want to see more of my videos in the future and be notified of them, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell next to that, and you will be notified when I release new videos. Thank you. Take care.